At this point, you should be getting fairly good at recognizing weak acids and weak bases. Um, weak acids can be recognized because they're not strong acids and their name is blah blah acid. Uh, weak bases can be recognized because they're not strong bases, they're not metal hydroxides that dissolve in water. And a lot of the weak bases uh, have the name blah blah amine. Not all of them, but a lot of them do. Um, a lot of them can be recognized as well by the context of the question. And a weak acid will undergo ionization in water that can generically be represented with this reaction. A weak base will undergo ionization in water which can generically be represented in this reaction. A weak acid will always produce an H plus in its equilibrium reaction with water. That's what makes it an acid. A weak base will always produce an OH minus in its equilibrium reaction with water. That's what makes it a weak base. But what happens if we get a question where we have a chemical species that is not an acid or a base? For example, what happens if we have a question that involves a salt? A salt is an ionic compound, anything with a cation and an anion, and a salt is not necessarily an acid or a base. It may not fit this category. Uh, for example, um, let's look at the salt sodium acetate. Sodium ion is Na with a plus one, acetate ion is CH3CO2 with a minus one. Um, this salt is soluble in water. That's um, something from Chem 1 or look up solubility rules. It is neither an acid or a base though. It does not react with water to produce H plus directly or OH minus directly. It is a salt and as such when, it, when you put it in water it dissolves because it's soluble and it forms ions. A soluble salt is a strong electrolyte because it dissolves in water and produces ions. Uh, a salt is an ionic compound and an ionic compound dissociates into the ions. And so the first thing that we should think about when we think of so, uh, a solution of sodium acetate is that we actually have the ions, the sodium ion and the acetate ion. Now we need to think of these ions in terms of do we have a weak acid or a weak base amongst these ions. And again, the more practice you get with this, the better you get at spotting these. What's happening here is that the acetate ion acts as a weak base. Now I know this from years of experience, but you can recognize this if you stop and think about what would the conjugates of these two be. In other words, what would the conjugate of the acetate ion be? Well, if it's an acid, its conjugate base is what you would get if it donated a proton, and that's not going to give you anything you recognize. If it were a base, its conjugate acid would be what you get if you give it an H plus, and its conjugate acid is acetic acid. Acetic acid is a common weak acid. You've probably worked a million problems with it already, and acetic acid is the acid formed from the acetate ion and the H plus. So CH3CO2 minus is a weak base because it is the conjugate base of a weak acid. Another way to think about these salts, and you pick whichever way makes more sense to you, you may recall from Chem 1 that an acid plus a base yields a salt plus water. If I react an acid and a base, I do get one of my salts. So I might get the salt that I'm talking about in this problem. Well, in order to get the salt, sodium acetate, what acid and base do I need to react? I would need to react the acid that contains the acetate ion and the base that contains the sodium ion. I would need to react sodium hydroxide, which is the base. I'll go ahead and write it first and acetic acid, which is the acid. So sodium hydroxide plus acetic acid gives you sodium acetate and water. When I have a reaction between a strong base, sodium hydroxide is a strong base, and a weak acid, acetic acid is a weak acid, I hope you're getting better at recognizing them, the salt that is produced is basic. This is what we call a basic salt. It is basic because when it dissociates in water, it produces the sodium ion and the acetate ion, and the acetate ion is a weak base. 
That's what makes this a basic salt. So a strong base and a weak acid give you a basic salt. In a similar fashion, if I have a strong acid and a weak base, the reaction of a strong acid plus a weak base does give you the salt in water, but it gives you an acidic salt. The reaction of a strong acid and a strong base gives you a neutral salt. A salt is neutral if the ions that make it up are, not, are neither weak acids nor weak bases. If we look back at our sodium acetate, this sodium ion is neither a weak acid nor a weak base. The reason why it's not is because it has absolutely positively no desire whatsoever to react with water to form anything. It's just hanging out in the aqueous solution. So this sodium ion is not, um, does not undergo any ionization, any further ionization reaction with the water and so it doesn't produce hydrogen ions, it doesn't produce hydroxide ions. It's simply a spectator, if you will. So this is a neutral ion. If I have HCl plus NaOH, hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide, you may recognize this. The salt that I get is sodium chloride and water. I get the sodium chloride and water, and sodium chloride is a neutral salt. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, sodium hydroxide is a strong base. This is a neutral salt because neither the sodium ion nor the chloride ion has any desire whatsoever to react with water, to react further with water to form H3O pluses or OH minuses. These just hang out in solution. And so salts, Salt solutions are solutions of ionic compounds. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split up the ionic compound into the ions and then I'll analyze the ions to decide whether or not I have a weak acid and or a weak base. That takes a little bit of experience so you want to make sure that you practice lots of these questions.